everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I am here for another Sew Along Sunday. It is part two of our B6358. I think I'm getting that number right. <laughs> Swimsuit Sew Along. So today we will be sewing the um, main body of the suit um, and then the homework for this for the end of today is um, putting the lining together. Now I did say at the end of it, because um, I was getting ready to stop filming for a little bit, to go ahead and, and assemble your lining the same way you assembled the um, outer swimsuit. I do put a note at the very end of the video to say don't do that <laughs> because I did do that and then realized you can't have the side seam sewn up yet because you still need to put in, there's kind of a um, floating bra kind of, um, like a, a built-in bra kind of into the the swimsuit and you have to put that in first that goes into the lining pieces so apologies that I got ahead of myself on there I did put a note at the end of the video um, so that no one else makes the same mistake I did um, but yes next week we will do our lining and put in that bra and all that kind of thing attach the lining and the main body of the swimsuit and then week four we'll put in all of our elastics and I will show you how to sew in a old bra into your swimsuit just to give you a little bit more oomph and lift if that's what you need. All right I hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, as always if you like this content and um, the tutorial was very helpful because this tutorial isn't just for this pattern, it's a swimsuit. You can, all of these skills and tips and tricks can definitely go across the gamut um, to any swimsuit pattern. Uh, but I do have a kind of a tip jar, a Kofi account, and I'll put that down uh, below if you'd like to buy me. I say Kofi, coffee account. It's K-O-F-I. The whole premise is you're buying me a cup of coffee if you're so inclined. Um, but kind of like a virtual tip jar um, if you enjoyed or found this uh, information helpful. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, leave me any questions you have in the comments below. I'll get to those as soon as possible, and I will see you all next week for part three. Bye. Okay, so we are ready to sew, and I wanna talk about the two machines that I'm gonna be using for this sew along. Um, this is my serger. I have a Baby Lock Evolution that actually will go from a cover stitch machine to a serger. Um, I just have it, it's my dedicated serger right now because I just got a new um, cover stitch uh, a few weeks ago. But anyway, <clears throat> I am going to use this machine for um, doing most of my seams. Not all of them, but most of my seams. However, the stitch that I'm gonna show you when we first start sewing here, you can do on all of the seams. Um, I just prefer the look. Number one, the serge seam is stretchier. So, um, because it is, just to give you a little um, what a serge seam is, it is two um, needles that have that are doing a straight stitch, but the bobbin is two loopers basically. So that um, all that extra thread and as it loops and wraps around the seam, make it a very very durable and also stretchy seam. So the serger does have a stretchier seam than the stretch stretch stitch on the machine, but on the regular sewing machine. But you can still definitely get away with um, using just a sewing machine to do swimwear fabric. Um, so yeah, I will be talking about that as well. So I'll be using my serger. And then I could use my cover stitch. This is my cover stitch. It's a um, Cover Pro 900 CPX. Um, but for a lot of the straight stitching, you could use a chain stitch on this, which just means uh, the cover stitch does two uh, straight stitches when you're in the regular cover stitch mode with a very loopy stitch on the back, which makes it a very, very stretchy stitch for M's and that kind of thing amongst other stuff. Um, or you could just do one needle and it's a chain, chain stitch, so it looks just like a regular single stitch um, length. So what you can just do one stitch with the um, cover stitch stitch machine um, that's a chain stitch, so that's just a single line of stitching with a loopier back on the back. Um, it's not as stretchy as a narrow zigzag or the stretch stitch on the sewing machine. So I'm actually not gonna use my cover stitch for this suit, um, mostly because I like the, the zigzag top stitching on swimsuits, I just like the way that looks. I think it looks kind of sporty um, and it's kind of my preferred method, and there's my tripod. <laughs> and then I will be using my home machine for the stretch stitch sewing that I will be sewing that I will be showing you. Um, this is a Memory Craft 9700. I've had this machine for ages, um, but it is, I, my industrial doesn't do a zigzag stitch. So I do use this when I'm having to do swimwear. Again, I could just use the cover stitch with my serger, but I'm gonna show you guys how to use a regular home machine because most home machines come with these utility stitches that allow you to do this as well. Okay. 
So let's get started with step one. All right, so we're gonna start um, with step one, <laughs> which is um, sewing this front piece, which is piece 16. Um, you should have a, a circle here that you do need to mark on the pattern, which I have done on both sides. Um, and you have four of the fashion fabric of the front because uh, you have to have the same fabric because of the ties, um, the nature of those and how they get turned around. So right now we're just working with the first two sets. Um, so these are the second two sets, which will technically be the lining. Um, so I'm just going to set, I've marked my dot on these as well, but I'm just going to set these aside for now. Um, so our step one is to actually sew starting from this circle all the way down to the bottom of this front seam, right sides together. So even though I'm going to be using a serger for a lot of this, this stitch that I'm about ready to show you, you can use on all the seams on this swimsuit. Um, because swimsuit fabric does not ravel, you can um, you don't have to finish off the fabric. So, um, and this is actually a lined suit, so you can actually really easily get away without having to use a serger on a lot of these pieces. Um, you know, just personal preference. But I'm going to start at this dot, and I will take you to the, the machine here in just a second. Start at this dot and go all the way down the seam, and it says here on the pattern piece, it's a 3 8 seam allowance. Um, the seam is 3 8 of an inch. Um, but it also says it in the instructions, so you don't have to get confused. So you can pin this. As you know, I rarely pin anything, so I'm not going to be pinning mine. But um, that is that is our step one, and so that is what we're going to do now. Okay, let's talk about stitches. I'm doing this on my phone just because of where these machines are set up. Okay, so this is asleep. <laughs> Wake up. And I think this is going to be really hard to see. Um, does that help at all? I don't know that that helps much, does it? Okay, so basically, um, hopefully you can see these okay. Um, but this stitch six that you see here on my machine right here is a zigzag stitch. However... I don't use that very often, but if you don't have a stretch stitch, which I'll show you in just a second, you can definitely use that and um, just make it shorter and narrower. Um, and I will look at the, I'll look at the stretch stitch and tell you what those are requirements are here in a second. Now the um, number seven stitch here is the triple um, zigzag, which means it sews, you know, stitch, stitch, it sews three stitches for each zig and zag going back and forth, which makes it a fantastic stitch. And I use this a lot for my elastic when I'm sewing in the elastic. So we will be using this one a lot. And then finally, this stitch 10 that looks like the lightning bolt, that is your stretch stitch. So if I click on that and then hit adjust. On that, you will see that it is the stitch itself, which you can totally do your zigzags, regular zigzag stitch and change it to this, is a one width and a 2.5 length. So um, I know that's kind of hard to see on this LCD screen, so I apologize. But that, you know, you can definitely not use the stretch stitch and use a regular zigzag and get the same results. But I'm going to go ahead and use the zigzag stitch that's already included, and this stitch is included in a ton of models of machines. So definitely check your machine to see if you've um, got one. All right. So that's what we were looking for. Um, other things with the machine. I have put on a... Um, hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> I have put on a walking foot on my machine. If your machine, um, you can find generic walking foots pretty easily. They just make sewing slippery fabrics, especially knits, very easy because it will feed, it has feed dogs on the foot as well as the regular feed dogs that are on the machine. So it feeds your fabric through easier, um, more evenly. Um, quilters use them all the time, but I love them for slippery fabrics and also for um, stretchy fabrics. So definitely, again, look to see if your sewing machine model comes with, if you can buy one for it. Um, and if not, just look for a generic one on Amazon. They are worth their weight in gold. I also have put in a size 11 stretch needle. It is a Schmetz. Let me get the package. It is Schmetz, and I, for all of my swimsuits, I like to use this brand. Oh, well, all my home machine needles, I always use Schmetz. It's my favorite needle brand for the home machine. Um, 
but the stretch stitch has just a little bit different. Um, you could use a ballpoint or a jersey, but they have different shafts or needle eyes. <laughs> the eye of the needle is a little different in a different place on the shaft. Um, so they are a little bit different, but I find that these sew the best with um, swimwear, anything that's super stretchy. So I, I really love the stretch needle from Schmetz, and that is a um, size 11 uh, for my swimsuit fabric. And then I just have regular polyester thread. Um, Guterman Mara 100 is my thread of choice. I use it for pretty much everything. Of course, there are some exceptions, but pretty much everything I use the Guterman Mara. All right, so I'm just going to line up my notches here. Um, I've got my stretch stitch on. I'm also sewing with you in my lap again. And I'm going to sew from my notch, which is right there, the pink dot going to lower my presser foot. Um, I also need to remind myself where three-eighths of an inch is here on this machine. I don't use this machine a ton anymore. There it is. Okay. Yes, because that's four. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to line these up, and we are going to start sewing the seam. So once again, you can totally sew your swimwear all the way with this stitch. But see how it's a little tiny little zigzag stitch. Can you see that? And it's pretty stretchy. Now, another thing to keep in mind, this is a vertical seam. So this is the front of the suit. And obviously when it gets opened up like this, um, it's a vertical, a vertical seam. And while you do need a little bit of stretch because swimsuits have negative ease both horizontally and vertically, um, it it's not as big of a deal because most of your stretch just needs to go around your body. Um, so it's not as big of a deal to use a little bit less stretchy stitch. So keep that in mind. Um, also, I think the seam allowances on this pattern are five eighths of an inch, except where noted. So just pay really close attention. And I will talk about that as we go, but yeah, just make sure you're, you're following that, um, guidance, you know, that you don't accidentally, you know, you're using the correct seam allowances, obviously is very important. So there we have it. That's the center front seam from the dot all the way down to the bottom with a three eighths of an inch seam. Um, and this is the main piece of fabric. I'm assuming we'll do this again for the lining, but the, I'm just gonna kind of follow the instructions on this one for now. Okay, so next, we're going to add our side fronts to each section. Um, but I'm going to do this with the serger because I can. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's go over to the serger. Now, you could totally use this same stitch and attach your sides, um, just right sides together using this same stitch. So, yeah, keep that in mind. If you don't have access to a serger, that's fine. You don't need one. Um, but I am going to use mine because that is my preference. Okay, so let's go to the serger. Here is our front and then we've got these you know ties here that are obviously overlapping one another because those will get tied here at the end um, once we have the lining and stuff in so now we are using our um, side pieces these are the side front pieces um, that uh, you should have cut two out of your fashion fabric and two out of your lining so we are just going to attach these and there are notches to match up and um, I've clipped into my um, fabric there for that um, so I'm just going to be sewing those on either side with my serger and I'm using five eighths of an inch seam allowance on this one because uh, it does not say what seam allowance to use. So that's how you know that um, you use the five eighths because that's what the pattern says to use five eighths unless otherwise noted. And if I look at the pattern piece here, it has me using three eighths of an inch seam allowance around the underarm and also here at the leg. Um, which you can't see <laughs> right here at the leg. But other than that, um, yeah, we'll just use our five eighths. So I'm just gonna sew uh, the two side panels on to the front uh, using five eighths of a seam, five eighths of an inch of a seam allowance. Okay, now my, my side piece is curvier than the front piece. So I'm gonna sew with it against the feed dogs, just like I would if I were sewing it on a machine. And I'm just going to line up my notches here and just kind of get things started. Uh, obviously this is a serger, so it does trim the fabric as I sew. 
And I also know um, lining it up with this line right here, lining the edge of my fabric up with this line, uh, means that it's sewing, my left needle is sewing at five eighths of an inch. So that's how, um, that's how I know that I'm lined up correctly. I'm just gonna sew a little bit here. I can get my pedal working. <coughs> anchored then I can match my notches All right, so there is a serge seam. So you see how the fabric wraps around it like that. There's two lines of stitching. It makes it very nice and secure and really stretchy. I mean, you lose like zero of the stretch from the, um, from the fabric. So I really like a serged edge. So um, I've clipped the um, threads off on either end because I will be sewing over those ends eventually. Um, so I can cut those tails off. I don't have to tuck those tails back in and they will be absolutely fine. Okay, I'm going to put you to the side here and I'm going to sew the um, second side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna sew with the um, side piece on the bottom. So we'll be sewing from the bottom up this time, right? No, from the top up, top up. So from the bottom up last time. <laughs> hey. Okay, so now I have the whole front of the suit sewn together. Oh, I also want to note that there is, I mean, she doesn't even say in here to press your seams open, which is fine because um, you want to be careful with swimwear fabric and an iron. It can melt it very easily, but it's coming along very nicely. Um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. For the most part with my pattern placing so placement so that's good it's matching nicely on both sides okay so the next step i'm going to set this aside for a minute is our back piece put my lining to the side we are going to sew you can still use your sewing machine if you'd like but we're just sewing this basically it's the center back seam the center back seam here. So this is the top of the back that will be the straps that connect eventually. And then you have the opening and then you've got this center back seam here that has a couple notches. So we're going to sew that seam, the bottom seam here, um, at five eighths of an inch again, because there is no indication on that seam to not use five eighths of an inch. So that's what we'll use.
Okay, now our back is sewn together. So now the back of our suit is sewn together. So we're starting to see <laughs> a little bit of um, the shape take place. Okay, and then our next is to Okay, our next is to um, sew our front and back together at the side seams. So I'm just going to lay my back face up here. Again, this gets a little messy only because you've got these straps that will eventually connect with each other, you know, and the same with the front, with the ties. So we're just going to match my side seams up, match my notches. Everything should line up fine. Let's see. And I'm going to sew with the back against the feed dogs because it is a little um, less of the concave curve. So I'm going to sew with it so I can easily bring that back in. Uh, five eighths of an inch seam allowance again for these side seams. To get that started a little. I would also like to note, um, so this is now sewn together at the side seams. Now we're going to do the crotch, but um, I'm cutting off my uh, thread tails at the top and bottom of these as well because they're all going to have intersecting seams, so I'm not too worried. Okay, here at the bottom, you've got your, um, this is the bottom, the crotch seam, and you've got notches, and then you've got the center because that's where we um, sewed those two together. I'm going to just finger press the seam allowance and center front open. And then I'm going to match it to the seam on the back and just pick a direction for that to go, right or left, it doesn't really matter. Um, then you find your pins that are, of course, too far away. And you can pin those, of course this is right sides together. And then you should have notches, and so you can pin those. And on this, you should be sewing a concave to a convex curve. So you just want to go slow. Um, it's a nice short seam, so it's not too bad. But this also gets sewn at um, 5 eighths of an inch. Now, the instructions tell you to do a double stitch seam, which is where you would stitch the seam and then go back and stitch inside the seam allowance again. Um, and if you're using a sewing machine and a, a stretch stitch, you could definitely do that just for <laughs> added um, security. But I already have two lines of stitching that sew when I'm using a cut when I'm using my serger, so I'm not. I'm just going to do it the once. So five eighths of an inch, just sewing the crotch together here. That just came out. If you are using a serger, you've got to be super careful about pins because running over a pin with a serger is a really, really big problem. If that blade hits uh, a pen, it can cause a ton of damage and ask me how I know. The other option with using a serger is to use like the wonder clips so that those are nice big and bulky and you don't accidentally hit that with the um, with the old serger. Okay, so now we kind of have a bathing suit. So here is the back. I mean, these are the straps that I will, here I'll turn it right side out. It's easier to see. <laughs> Obviously we don't have any straps on, on this yet, but here's the front. Where we've got the, you know, the, these will eventually tie like so. There will be straps and then this will fasten around the back and then there's your back. So you're kind of starting to see a little bit of the, um, what it's going to look like. Okay, so we have one whole 
swimsuit. So now we are going to do exactly these same steps, but with the um, other set of fronts, which will be fashion fabric, and then your lining pieces. So I'm gonna do that off camera just because it's literally the same thing I just did. So I'm gonna do it really quickly and then I'll come right back.